So the movie comes out. Yeah. And uh, let's look it up real quick. Hold on. Uh, had a twenty million dollar budget, and it did twenty four million in the box office. Right. So it was one of these critically acclaimed films, but it wasn't like a blockbuster. Well, here's the thing. Um, first of all, the drama on that film was the director was taken off of it because Tony K wanted to direct. Well, he edited the film as well as he should. There was a diff, there was a complication with Ed wanting to be in the in the editing room, mm -hmm. and you know no actor should be in the editing room, you know, and they had beef for that. So they kind of fired Tony K off to film for editing, and he was like, take my name off of it. And it was so crazy because uh, he would take these full page ads out on the back of, of the Variety, and each day for like a week or two weeks he would dedicate the whole back page to one of the actors and said, hey, please, you know, I came here to do, to do to, to follow my dream and be a film director and my dream was taken away from me and blah, 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 blah. And I was caught between the rock and the hard place because mm. uh, here is, I'm new in the business, I'm young, I'm green, uh, I'm black, uh, and which means, you know, we're already on thin ice, unfortunately, in, in, in this world and in the entertainment industry. And when you're green and you don't really have a name for yourself, you know, you you, you kind of, you know, you kind you kind of stuck between the rock and hard place because he was telling me the director was telling me not to go in and support the film, not to go in and do any voiceover, ADR, or anything. And but at the same time, like man, this is you know I, this is Hollywood. I'm I'm not bigger than Hollywood, and I ended up doing it, and it was it was an uncomfortable situation to be in. And um, as a young actor, you know, coming in with that that type of weight was 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 stressful. Cause I'm like, man, am I betraying the guy who hired me for this film? And if I, you know, don't go in, am I betraying, you know, Hollywood? So it was, it was a weird place to be in, man. Well, it was an important role for you, though. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, mean, I didn't know it at the time to be this. I mean, it's gonna be completely honest. If I, if I, if I sat here and said, oh yeah, I knew it was gonna be this, I had no fucking idea. I didn't know it was gonna have the impact that it had. Yeah. And it did. I mean, it changed my my career. It changed my life. Uh. And, you know, it, it was just an incredible piece of work that no matter where I go in this world, somebody comes up to me and there's a week that goes by, at least three people come to me and mention that film. I was in uh, Dayton, Ohio, about two years ago, doing a comedy show at the Funny Bone. And after the show, you know, I'm greeting people saying, thanks for coming and all that. And when everybody leaves, this white guy comes up to me. And he had tears in his eyes. I said, man, you have no idea what that movie did for me, American History X. And I said, well, he said, man, I was a skinhead. Mm -hmm. And after watching it and seeing your role, it changed my life. It saved my life. I was on a, a path of destruction and, and, and prison and watching you in that role. And I started crying. And we started hugging like two little bitches. And, and but it was like, and I ran into people who was like, um, did a thesis statement on American History X. I've run into um, <laughs> athletes who, funny story, I'm probably gonna get killed for this, but I ran into a, a Laker one time. I won't say his name, I won't give him up. He said, man, I saw American Strikes, man, you're great in it. I said, yeah, yeah, he said, yeah. Phil, Phil Jackson used it for film study. Hmm. You know what I mean? At the time, you know, we were, the Lakers and the Sacramento Kings was just like at it, you know, they were, they were, you know, owning us. It was a great, great rivalry when they had Vladi and they had Chris Webber and they had Jason Williams, ball head, white point guard, who kind of looked like Ed Norton. Then they had Rick Edelman <laughs> as the head coach, who kind of looked like Adolf Hitler. So <laughs> the guy said, the player said that, you know, Ed would, I mean, the field would take film scenes for American History X with Ed Norton and Skinhead and then splice it in with Jason Williams. And then so and, and then show Coach Edelman on the sideline with the little mustache he had, Hitlerish, you know, and splice in a, a scene of Hitler. So they said when they took the court during that series, all they saw was those, all they saw was those images, and they wanted to beat the shit out of the Kings, and they did. And it was like, wow, that's that Zen, the Zen master, you know. So I was like, well, can I have a ring then? <laughs> Where's my ring? They ended up winning the championship that year, and so that film was used. And so I get so many law. Um, lawyers and 
And people in law enforcement, man, I, you know, we studied your film in, um, in school. I wrote a paper on it. When that film was out, we did a, a, a panel at the Museum of Tolerance. And they I invited all these groups of skinheads out. Like, I had no idea there's several different groups of skinheads. There's like white skinheads and they're Asian skinheads, they're black skinheads and they're Latino skinheads. I'm like, damn. And we had this panel, it was myself, I think Elliot Gould was there, the director, and, and we just did this panel of racism, how, you know, how stupid it is and their beliefs. And it was just weird to, 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 to see these group of people who are hating, you know, each other for really no fucking reason.